Will this Cincinnati Reds team make the playoffs in 2024? Some say yes, some say no. We'll show you both sides of that coin on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds, and my name is Jeff Carr. Steve Offenbaker will be along shortly with me. We are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have changed an addiction that we've had to this team into information for you. I want to thank you for joining us. This is part two. One, two, one. Yeah, part two of our conversation with Charlie Goldsmith and Austin Elmore, getting you set for Reds baseball as we are here on opening day eve on this part so part two bonus part whatever you want to call it on this part we are going to talk about playoffs or no playoffs for the cincinnati reds we're going to look at david bell and the managerial staff are they feeling the pressure this season is david bell on the hot seat yeah, we'll get into all that and we'll give you some opening day predictions some things to expect tomorrow but thank you so much for joining us here on this Lockdown Reds podcast that is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today and use the code First Pitch to get twenty dollars off your purchase of one hundred and fifty dollars or more. So, with that in mind, you're talking about the pressure and and kind of where the front office is. I mean, I think it's it's very obvious now that Nick Crawl is the man in charge and it seems not necessarily obvious, but it seems evident that the window is opening. So to playoffs or not to playoffs, mm. that is the question. I'm at 81 wins with the Reds right now. This team has the upside to get it done. I'm just factoring in the injuries and the suspensions. And I think those are really significant players for a team that I was in the 88 to 90 win range with already. And like I mentioned, things like the depth, I mean, that's, that's really real. And if you ask, uh, again, from a Reds perspective, you know, if you ask them what, what could hold this team back, the depth is definitely something they're, you know, focusing so much on the waiver wire right now to look at because they know they need to get it uh, to, to have it get better. So, again, they could definitely get it done. But right now I'm at 81 wins and no playoffs for them. Oh, he does say no. Yeah, I, I agree at the moment. I, I think they can get there, but the, the National League is really, really good. I, I think it's difficult for them to win the national or to, to make the playoffs without winning the National League Central. Mm -hmm. uh, until I see who this team is over the first month, again, back to Steve's point, it's just it's been it's been killing them the last several years. Until I see who they are over the, the first month of the season, I, I can't say definitively definitively right now, yes, they are going to make the playoffs. I have them in almost the exact same spot as last year, 82 to 83 wins and just missing the playoffs. So for me, I'm still team playoffs. I think they're going to get in. I think they're going to win this division. I think that the Milwaukee Brewers are going to continue to blow it up. Mm -hmm. I think that the Cubs of this year are really not much better than the Cubs of last year. They'll be the stiffest competition. I think the names that the Cardinals signed are highly overvalued by most people. I don't think they're going from last to first, and I think the Pirates are the Pirates. So I think of any division, the Reds have an opportunity here to get mm -hmm. it done. This was an 82-win team last season. And it's better than where it started. You know, we can go back to where I started uh, when we started talking today. Gone is Sessa and Overton and Weaver. Gone is Jason Bossler. Gone, for the love of God, is Kevin Newman. All of those guys are gone. And they have all been replaced with better players. Now, I know the depth is thin. But if what is healthy right now can continue to be healthy until some of these parts come back, this team is just going to keep getting better and better and better. I still think they can win 85 to 87 games, and I think that's good enough to win the National League Central. Hmm. And you mentioned the age of the Cardinals. If there's any team in the division that is looking at the Reds and in a longing fashion, it's the Cardinals because of the injuries that they mm -hmm. have incurred as well to begin the season. A lot of their lineup is hurt. Sonny Gray is hurt. Uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they mitigate those losses as well as how they move throughout the season with a couple of guys that sure they are, they're seasoned vets. They've seen their time in the major leagues, but you know, Gibson led the team or led the league in hits allowed and, and Lance Lynn, or, you know, led the league in homers allowed. And I'm sure our friend JD over at, uh, lockdown Cardinals and, uh, you know, a, a, cohort of Austin's over mm -hmm. at iHeartMedia. Um, I'm sure he's going to be really happy uh, whenever the season starts and we can stop saying that those guys led the league and all that stuff. <laughs> but 
overall, I still think that they get 85 wins, and I think they win this division because I just I I think that they match up well with everybody in division even though they play less games against them. But I think that there will not be that whole, oh my gosh, the Reds have to face the Brewers again. How are they going to do it? I don't think we have to worry about that this year. And I think that the Reds are going to be able to play well against everybody in-house, which is going to vault them up to the top. I really, really want to agree with you. I really, really want to say they can make the playoffs. But right now I'm just in I'll believe it when I see it mode. I think it's there. I think it's possible, much like Charlie said, but I just need to see it. And I think that's I think that's kind of the realistic point of view when it comes to this team. Like, I mean, if if I take off my optimistic goggles, which is really hard because they're kind of sewn on. I was gonna say, I, yeah, those are just your eyes. <laughs> it's just my eyes. Like, if I just close my eyes for a minute and I think about this, and I'm like, you know, there's a lot about this team that I kind of come to the conclusion of I gotta see it to believe it. I gotta see the defense that'll believe it. I gotta see the pitching to believe it. I gotta see a couple of guys taking that next step. They gotta do it you know, for me to believe that's going to happen. I just, I do believe that more of those will happen than, than not. So that's, that's kind of where I am. Um, you know, Jeff, one that, of the things that we haven't touched on yet, and I think maybe it would be a good to get some perspective from outside, just me and you on this. Uh, we talked about the short leash for guys like Will Benson. We talked about the pressure, the short leash that the front office may feel and the expectations that come along with this season. We haven't really talked about the coaching staff very much. And for David Bell, he's never really been expected to field a playoff team. You know, he got handed kind of a hot steamy pile of problems and it's not gotten better. It was wait for this moment, this moment that we're in now, wait for this crop of players to come and run with them. And I think for the first time, there is an expectation from the city, from, from Reds country. There's an expectation from the players themselves. There's an expectation from the front office and the ownership that this is a team that should be competing, that should be winning, and we should be talking about them in the playoffs. And as you can see, we have four people here. We just talked about the playoffs, and we were split 50-50. So for this coaching staff, what is the increase in pressure going to be like? What is the amount of hot seat. What's the gauge there on a one to 10 hot seat level is David Bell going to be feeling this year to keep this team in or close to first place beginning to end. David Bell still what? 10 months removed from a contract extension. So that helps. And that's, that's, that's big. It's what it is. It, it's funny. Um, I view David Bell's and the coaching staff role in this team very differently than I did two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I was talking about like they could have sat in a room for hours and debated before every game what the lineup was going to be. And there would have been a tangible difference in how, you know, how that would perform on the field. You would have to win those margins. Now, I feel like the lineup is very much more set. What it is, is the upside of the guys like we're talking about. I think, and this is, this isn't a bad thing. This isn't a rebuilding thing. The focus is now much more on the player development that this coaching staff fosters and creates. It's how Ellie takes the next step. It's how Hunter takes the next step. Will Benson, we literally just went down the list. When I look at what this coaching staff has to do this year, I really focus on the player development side. One exception, right now, the bullpen, you got some pieces, you got some options also like behind Diaz, like two through six, a lot of similarities there in terms of like how good you are. There, there aren't tiers. So I'm very interested to see how that, um, you know, how those roles shape out um, because David Bell has said it won't be, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth guy. It'll be very matchup specific. So that's the one spot um, kind of from a game management, but then big picture, definitely a focus on player development. We got some more managerial discussions, including a prediction. I'm sure you're going to love. With baseball season finally upon us, the best way to enjoy each and every day's action is with Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and begin making your picks. You can make up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks. Download the app today and use the code Lockdown MLB. They'll match up to $100 on your first deposit. You can put together these great picks that can make you some cash off of their performances. I'm looking specifically for this opening day matchup of the Reds and the Nationals. Ellie De La Cruz, the over-under on runs scored in this game by Ellie De La Cruz is .5. So literally, if he scores one run, boom, you do it. You hit more on that. Plus, they have strikeouts, total strikeouts on Frankie Montas at five. You hit more on that, put those two together, and then combine it 
With an interesting one that I like here, the hits, runs, and RBIs. Price Picks has these great different stats that you can choose, and they combine hits, runs, and RBIs. They have them over under one, or uh, they have the hits, runs, and RBIs set at one and a half for Lane Thomas for the Washington Nationals. Lane Thomas killed the Reds last year, so you know if he hits a home run, boom, that's it. You hit the more on that, so. Hit more on Lane Thomas, 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Price picks is something we're going to be talking about all season long. It's a great way for you to make some cash off of the Reds' performances and their opponents' performances as well. So download the app today and use the code LOCKEDONMLB to get a deposit match on your first deposit of up to $100. Click more, click less. It's that easy. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, I, I think internally there's not going to be a lot of pressure on David Bell or heat on David Bell unless they completely fall flat on their face and this team is an embarrassment. You know, another 3-22 and 22 type of start I think would be disastrous for him. Uh, but I do think that if there's one thing I have experienced in my profession, it's that Reds fans love to blame the manager. And Joey Votto is not there anymore. So all those people that used to hate Joey Votto are now going to spell all that hate on uh, David Bell. And, and he's going to have the, uh, the the heat cranked up on him by the people on social media and hashtag Reds Twitter. Not that they pay any attention to that. Um, but every little thing that he does is going to be, you know, under a microscope, microscope, especially when you have so many players on the team that fans like now and they don't want to blame the player and they don't want to blame the superstar and so on and so forth. And I think David will catch a lot of heat for that. I don't think that's anything he's really all that, uh, you know, not used to, but I do think that that is going to be a louder part of this red story this year. If they don't perform to perform really, really well. Yeah, Steve, you said David Bell, and I think several folks just jumped in the comment section and was like, oh, he's horrible. I should fire him right now. <laughs> and uh, that's just the nature of the job when it comes to David Bell. I, I think that he is in a very enviable position where he wasn't the last couple of years. Like, the bullpen is such a strength of this team. When you added Brent Suter and Emilio Pagan and – and Nick Martinez, depending on how the rotation moves whenever Nick Lodolo comes back on you know April 10th, April 11th, thereabouts, if Nick Martinez moves to the bullpen, he has two guys that he can trust to not even go two innings, but three or four innings if he needs them in Martinez and Suter. And then you've got your your you know your late inning guys. It feels like the Reds have a couple of those. And he also has a wild card that if he plays and goes nuts, TJ Antone was once the closer of this team. And if he can continue on his path of redemption and maybe take a late inning spot or something like that, then all of the more, you know, help to David Bell for him to just be like, you know what, if I raise my right arm or if I raise my left arm, I'm feeling pretty good about who's coming out of the outfield pen there. So that's something that in years past, it feels like we have, you know, cringed at most of the names that we were about to hear from Joe Zarehusen's mouth. Whereas this year, I feel like it's completely different. I think that there's a lot of good options for him to go to. And on the lineup side, yeah, like, kind of feels like right now they have an everyday eight or nine. You could make an argument that the DH could change a little bit here and there, but not a whole lot. You have some, a key delineation between who should be bench players and who should be starters with the injuries that they've incurred. So I think that that kind of helps him out a little bit. And the idea that I, I think there's some folks that are worried that David Bell's, you know, propensity to tinker means that he's going to be putting people who don't deserve to be in the lineup in the lineup He's not dumb. He's here for a reason. He's not going to put the guy in here that's a worse matchup than, you know, if it's if it's Will, Will Benson or if it's Ellie De La Cruz. They're not going to replace them with lesser guys. That's, he knows what he's doing 
with the talent. So I'm with you. I think that the, the player development side is going to be an interesting factor. And, you know, the Orioles are really good. The Dodgers are really good. It feels like those teams fall out of bed and they probably win, you know, either over a hundred games or right at a hundred games. So it's going to be hard to say that David Bell has a stranglehold on a chance to win manager of the year, but I definitely think he's in the conversation at the end of the year. Oh, manager of the year. Huh? Okay. Well, that took a turn from where I started. All right, Jeff. Um, I guess there's just a few. Are you wearing those goggles? By the way, by the way, by the way, I've said this twice on two different shows now. And both times, Steve had nothing to say afterward. He really had to find what he was going to respond to. Well, neither I'm did Charlie just, and I. <laughs> I'm not right? just saying it. I'm not just saying it. I believe it. I believe he can do that it. That came out of nowhere. All right, little little housekeeping things. Some things we haven't touched on. And with you guys, uh, with you guys joining us, maybe you have some some insider scoops. Uh, why aren't we hearing anything about Matt McClain? Uh, we're now two MRIs deep and have yet to hear what really the nature of this injury is. Um, I, I understand they're trying to get a handle on exactly what's going to happen moving forward, but they've been dealing with this for a while now. And we have come a long way from precautionary scratch for shoulder soreness to second opinion with the LA famous. So why aren't we getting any information on this? I expect we'll get that tomorrow. Probably what's unique here is that like it's in the lead up to the season. So they're just like different stuff going on if this were the regular schedule and flow of the season i bet this would have taken a lot you know less time um yeah I, I, we'll, we'll likely get an update on mcclain tomorrow they found something in his shoulder they're they need to know more information they didn't have all the information that's why they have continued to follow through this uh, again i said earlier today i've heard overall optimism and positivity for the course and the scope of mcclain's big picture season um definitely uh some rehab and recovery ahead of him starting the starting the year on the il but uh, again i don't think it's a it's a huge deal kind of a normal injury progression as they get more information and then make a decision just with a little bit of a difference because of the timing yeah, we had a guy on our show Tuesday uh, named Charlie Goldsmith who just said everything he just said right now, and I think that's the best way to describe Matt McClain. <laughs> yeah, it, the second opinion thing, it just always gets gets me a little bit worried that I, I'm really hopeful that we see him at some point this year, and it, it, it just seems like such a huge blow to lose him for the entire season. If they If they can hang on for whatever amount of time it is and then get him back, and he is healthy and he's 100% and he's fresh and ready to go, this lineup is going to look so much more dangerous down the stretch run. And then you talk about, too, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a, a healthy and ready to go T.J. Friedel, whatever the Reds end up doing with Noah V. Marte, which I am a little bit interested in that, and we'll circle back in just a few moments. But I, I, I'm not super optimistic on what we're about to hear. The optimistic goggles are not on for the, for the Matt McClain news. Um, I thought but you were yes. going to have him starting on opening day. I'm a little surprised. No, no, no I bet you that Jeff somewhere secretly in his mind thinks that Matt McClain's going to be the 26th man. That's how optimistic. <laughs> Can you imagine if he just like come? He does the thing CJ Uzama did before the Super Bowl. <laughs> and he comes out like a shoulder brace, rips it off, and runs out to second base. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just envisioning. I remember when and he doesn't get a return back at halftime, and the Bud Dogs win the Bourbon Bowl. Like that's <laughs> something that I'm thinking about when I'm thinking. Uh, not, not quite. Um, and I mentioned it for just a moment. I'm curious what you guys think about this and. 80 game suspension, not being able to play in the playoffs. Is Noel V. Marte playing for this team at any point this year, or would it just behoove Nick Crawl to leave him in Louisville? I, in terms of, are you saying for like service time specific reasons? I, I service time slash just the overall vibes of this and all that other stuff. I wouldn't say that's a factor. I think what really you'll see okay. is Noel V. will have to quote unquote earn a spot. He'll have to play well. And, you know, the extended spring training workouts that he's getting. And I know that's not much, but I know it's important to go out and kind of work your way and earn your way and get the work you need to get done uh, to go back up to the big leagues. And then when that's the case, you know, assuming Noel V. Marte comes out of this strong physically from a good overall baseball standpoint, I think he'll be fine. I think it'll be one of the big stories of the season. You know, when he comes back, how that specific role shapes out, I guess, as we see him a lot of third, I know for a fact that someone will get hurt between now and then. So, you know, you know, it would be a waste of time to say specifically what the infield combination will end up being there. He's got talent. He's got potential. He made a mistake. And we'll see where he's at from an overall baseball perspective when it's that time. Coming up next, a couple of opening day predictions, including some pitching, some hitting, 
and some stealing bases. Game time is the best way to get to the ballpark, period, plain, and simple. When it comes to the last minute deals that you're looking for, when it comes to finding the diamond in the rough, when you're looking for tickets, game time is the way to do that. Check out the game time app today, download it and use the promo code locked on and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. There's so much going on with game time as we head toward opening day. It's a lot of great stuff for you to take advantage of. They even have deals for continuing users, not even just new users. But if you're like me and you have the Game Time app, you can use the promo code First Pitch to get twenty dollars off a purchase of one hundred and fifty dollars or more. So download the Game Time app today. It's my favorite way to get to the ballpark. It's Steve's favorite way to get to the ballpark. We go down, hang out at the banks, find some last minute deals, get into the ballpark nice and easy game time helps you out they've got the last minute tickets to the lowest price guaranteed download the app and use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase and use the code first pitch for twenty dollars off a purchase of 150 dollars or more you guys might have the answer to this i I don't know for sure i I know that if he wants to play in the postseason there has to be an appeal process I, i would imagine I don't know the timeline for if or when that's going to happen. And if so, if that plays a role in, in his playtime down the stretch, do you guys know like what that appeal process or the timeline for that is? I, I don't have a timeline for that. No, definitely something I've, I've got to check in on later in the summer. Um, but as of right now, I think the expectation is that the Reds are preparing for no Marte in the playoffs. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, it's interesting to me because I think that there's a philosophical side of this, and then I think there's a realistic side to this, that he is up here when he's ready to go because the Reds have been banking on this idea that they're going to be able to rotate 10, 11 different guys every single day and give a lot of you know different time off. Steve and I colloquially will refer to them as the hashtag rest in Reds. Uh, if, if things were all you know created equal, which they aren't at the moment, but if they get everybody back, I could see that going back into practice. Yeah, and I, I think it's situational, Jeff. I mean, we can kind of speculate what they'll do, but it really depends on what this team looks like when he's ready to actually play. Like Charlie says, there, there, there could be injuries. There probably will be injuries along the way. Uh, the question is, who's hurt at the time that Marte is available? And then if they don't have a specific need and the team is cooking – Maybe you do leave him down for service time reasons or for just the fact that he's not going to be available for the playoffs. So roll with who you got for for how you've got him. So I'll be interested to see how it plays out. I I, I think it's it's I think it's not a it's not a shoe in, I guess, is what I'm saying. It's going to really depend on what things look like when he's ready to play. I mean, he's a tremendous talent. It would be very hard to leave him sit down there uh, knowing that, you know, you could have him out there for. 70 games, let's say. Um, But I think it will depend on what it looks like as far as where the Reds are in the standings, who is actually available and who is not. Um, I I don't know that's a gimme. I don't know that it's going to be a, well, he's ready, bring him up. Uh, There may be a little bit more evaluation to that than, than what we think there might be. Well, tell me you're excited about opening day without telling me you're excited about opening day. We've been talking quite a lot about these Cincinnati Reds. I appreciate you guys for joining us for all this long conversation. Real quick, before we let you go, though, give me one bold opening day prediction for the opening day game what's gonna happen Mm. austin you go first oh that's a good one um a bold opening day prediction i'm gonna say that the reds go back to back homers Mm. in the bottom of the first inning wow first inning they go back to back and the stadium erupts i don't know who it's gonna be i don't know who it's gonna be but they go back to back in the first inning against Josiah Gray and the Nats. I'm not predicting who's going to win. I could, but this isn't the prediction. The (laughs) prediction independent, I'll I'll pick the Reds. They have a a better pitching matchup, but that's not the prediction. (laughs) The prediction is that Brent Suter will pitch two, not one, two scoreless Mm -hmm. innings out of the bullpen. Oh, Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. All right. I'm going to give you that David Bell is going to get ejected. Oh, wow. Arguing. Yes. Yes. Arguing a yes. call at second base where Ellie De La Cruz's size 14 foot 
gets called for obstruction, tagging a runner out when he slides in. On <laughs> I Steve. want this. You're, I want this so bad. I, I, I don't spend too much time worrying about Bell's ejections, but this obstruction thing is like yeah. um, you're you're on to something here. Yep. This will be a very interesting story. It came up once in the spring training game. Um, I will. I'm not getting into the ejection stuff, but I will say you are not allowed to discuss the point during the inning. You have to wait until the half inning is over until you can get an explanation for the obstruction call from the umpire. So if He's there's a, a, work on their story. So if there's a conversation a going on about obstruction during a half in, during, you know, all the games going on, wow. get, get ready. So they oh, can I work on their story, give them time to figure it out. And then they can come. Oh my goodness. It's my That's favorite funny. thing. Angel in the world. Hernandez rule. Train wreck. Um, all right. I think <laughs> Ellie De La Cruz is going to steal home base. Wow. On mm. Opening day. I think I think he is rolling into the season with so much confidence, and I'm rolling into the season with so much confidence in what he is going to be for this team this year that he's gonna he's gonna start the season off in a big big way. I think he's gonna steal home, whether it be a double steal. I know that the Reds love that, and I'm sure we'll see that uh, here against uh, this this Nationals team, which I haven't analyzed their catching uh, situation too much, but I remember that the Reds ran all over them last year when they faced the Nationals. So would be curious to see how that develops. But I think that that's that's my bold prediction for opening day. You know, an Ellie. extremely bold prediction could be Jesse Winker and Nick Senzel go deep for the Washington Nationals. Oh, and, Derek, and Derek Law ever. gets the save in this game. Derek Law gets the save. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thanks, everybody, so much for checking out. Appreciate you joining along. If this is you, you're, you're watching this, you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. A lot of great information, a lot of great Reds chatter here. This has been a busy day. Had two full episodes for you. Had a lot to get to with Charlie and with Austin, so I appreciate you hanging on with us here. If you're on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. If you're on your favorite podcast app, make sure you're following us because we will be with you all throughout the season because we are locked on Reds every single day.